Welcome to the end game. That is the strategy map. Here I'm going to be covering some basic concepts to get you started, information on how to maintain your ATs and some guidelines. This guide might be a bit difficult to follow so I included time steps to help you follow along. So strap in and let's get started. To get started on RTS play you need to unlock a command point by reaching rank 12 with any soldier. Then buying an assault team, done with war funds or gold, and equipping said assault team on him to deploy on the war map. On the RTS, once the deploy button is pressed, your assault team goes into queue for resources. These resources are shared between the entirety of your chosen faction, so usually getting infantry assault teams is pretty easy. But specialist ATs like tanks, planes, paratroopers takes quite a bit of time, depending on the faction selected. Once deployed, your ATs can be selected and moved by dragging, or mass moved by holding shift and checking ATs you want, or control if you want to select individual ATs. Make a town fun, which basically means that it is eligible to be played, you need at least 216 infantry. Although you can make towns fun using paratroopers only, which requires 216 paratroopers and 72 paraplane. You can also mix and match ATs like for example 108 infantry and 108 paratroopers with 36 paraplanes, or 108 infantry and 90 tank tickets, or 108 infantry and 90 recons, or a combination of those. They will be eligible to be fun as long as there is at least 108 infantry and enough specialist classes. However, if it's an encounter like Colmar, Hamlet or Depot, you need at least 144 infantry to make it fun. However, sometimes match even though fun from both sides don't start. In that case, auto resolver kicks in after 5 minutes of preparing time and 65 minutes of starting time. Once the auto resolver kicks in, the side with less overall warfund value in ATs loses and their treat happens. Also, if the match is auto resolved in any way, no side earns warfunds or experience. So having your matches be played is very important. Morale is another mechanic of RTS. You start with 100 morale that can be increased with badges. You expend 10 morale if the assault team won the match and suffer 20 morale instead if a match with your assault teams lost. Cheating instantly loses you 20 morale as well. Now this is important because once you go below 25 morale, your AT disbands and you need to redeploy it again, which means you lose war funds. However, your assault team passively regains morale at the speed of 1 morale point per 6 minutes or 10 morale per hour, although that too can be sped up with a badge. Assault teams have a separate XP counter that determines whether you can upgrade your assault team or not. The XP is awarded as follows. For winning you get a flat 30 XP, for losing you get 5. It doesn't matter if whatever your AT got completely wasted, you will get this amount as long as the match actually got played in an FTS match. As said, you can upgrade your ATs, which is done with war funds or gold, once you have enough XP on them, but be careful since some ATs require you to have two command points deploying instead of one. However, you can easily check this in an upgrade path list. I recommend avoiding infantry assault team and going for motorized guards for upgrades, and not upgrading your paratroopers at all since they are mostly used for blocking towns or enemy assault team movement. The actual XP that is gained by the commander of AT depends on what got killed and follow the same awarding mechanism as war funds. Obviously you have to manage your morale, I for instance usually don't allow my assault teams to drop below 40 points of morale, because if they lose a match I lose the AT and thus war funds. However, if the area is very active, that threshold would be higher, for instance like 50 or 60 morale. because. People like to block towns with paratroopers and it is a pretty common strategy used by clans. Having your AT surrounded is also a bad idea, since we don't have anywhere to retreat, they will undeploy, which again, loses the war funds. To avoid this, you have to monitor your ATs, and if you see a potential encirclement happening, you might consider retreating your AT from the battle. 
or place your ATs in numerous choke points on the map. Another common trick is sending specialist ATs after the FPS match is filled so that the amount of your specialist ATs wouldn't be used by a huge amount of players that are waiting in queue. You will also encounter closed lines. These lines will not provide war funds unless retaken on FPS match. You can check whatever the line is closed by hovering over the line and checking if, if it has resources and if it's a different color from your own faction. War funds are gained by playing war matches and capturing objectives or by your ATs killing your opponent's AT tickets. Rohan's gain is the same as cost to deploy per ticket base, but you can gain more with veteran membership which helps maintain an army and I would very much recommend using it if you plan on playing RTS long term. Depending on what's being killed you get a flat amount as long as you are the only one in the town with vet assault teams. If you are not alone and other generals have ATs as well, they have a chance of getting more funds from vet kill depending on the amount of ATs they have. So in essence all that got killed in a match by that type of AT, for instance infantry, tankers, planes or recons gets distributed as war funds to every AT of that type randomly. So the best way of getting war funds is to send your ATs to matches that have low amounts of ATs but are still fun to be able to be played. Also queuing on that match will increase the likelihood that that match will be played and you get war fund payout. Infantry is the cheapest to maintain Warfront wise, and the most versatile class in the FPS game, thus having your army be mostly infantry is the best course of action. Now whatever you want them to be motorized guards, motorized infantry or mechanized infantry depends on the faction's resources. However, I usually follow the rules of as much as possible mechanized infantry and 2.5 to 1 motorized guard to motorized infantry ratio. Also, since the armor update, light tanks are extremely efficient, especially against infantry only, so, can you, so you can use biggies in decent numbers as well. To get vision on RTS map, get recons and upgrade them to motorized recons as soon as possible. If you are playing alone, paratroopers are a bit of a waste of a war funds, so I don't recommend using them unless you're coordinating with a clan. Everything else like planes are tier tanks. Depend on whenever you want to play them, yourself. If you don't, then just ignore them. Since sending them into matches means they will be wasted and will usually lose you war funds. Having soldiers is much more preferable to having a general, because you can't play FPS side of the game with a general. However, generals can equip any type of assaulting and can gain a decent amount of command points over what a normal soldier could. I recommend getting a ton of soldiers before even thinking of promoting one to general. The maximum soldier count for a single faction is 30, at which point you are forced to promote to a general to get more soldiers. If you do decide to promote a soldier to a general, I recommend grinding Battlefield Commander and Charismatic Leader badges before doing it, since you will not be able to use any of the FPS badges. Once that general is promoted, his equipment, vehicles and camos will go to the depot where you can give those things to any soldier that can use it. Also the mods will not be wasted and can be transferred to any eligible soldier as well. Hopefully this updated guide helps you on your journey to get more XP and enjoy the endgame of Heroes and Generals. And hopefully I didn't bore you to death with this guide and I'll see you guys later.